And the last session of today's Arctic seminars uh, also co continues on the vein of sound design. And we will welcome on the stage the lead sound designer from Remedy Entertainment, who did Quantum Break, the, the game that well, plenty of you have probably already played at this point. So let's welcome uh, Mr. Ville Sorsa. Hi. How's everyone going? Woo. Cool. Um, it was a bit difficult task to uh, try to squeeze in my last four years that I've been working on this project into a bit more than half an hour. So let's get this presentation going. So a few words about myself. Um, Apart from being a sound designer at Remedy Entertainment, um, I've got a pretty extensive career in all forms of audio. Um, I've been a musician, music producer, and a DJ. I've owned a label for uh, almost, a record label for almost 10 years. And uh, I've also worked in a radio, television, and movie industry as well. Um, I've got a BA in digital sound and commercial music. I graduated in 2010. And in recent years, my career has done a sort of a shift from music and old mediums to new media productions. Few words about Remedy Entertainment. It's an independent game development company founded 1995 in Espo. It originates from a demo group called Future Crew, and it's practically a IP factory. We're known for strong main characters, story-driven games, and bullet time. So, what is Quantum Break? Quantum Break is an interactive linear hybrid transmedia entertainment product <laughs> that marries video game with live action show. It's sort of a superhero origin story as well. It consists of five acts, and between those acts, there's junction moments. And in those junction moments, you get to play the bad guy. And the bad guy can see in the future, there's two different futures. And depending on what sort of choices you make in the game, and what sort of choice you make in the junction moment, you will see a custom cut, your version of the TV show after these junction moments. The game was development roughly about four years, and when we, when we started off, we only had two people working in the audio team. And by the end of the production, we had six internal designers and integrators, four composers, and one audio coder. We also had some help from a content outsourcing company, Foley company and cinematic post-production company, to help us basically ship the game on time. Now, just that you understand the sort of like the scope of the game and like what we're facing with this, um, the sort of like initial scope was absolutely massive. And uh, right here in this sort of like a graph, you can see the entire game, all the acts, and uh, junction moments, and this is actually lacking the uh, television series element in this graph. There was roughly about 11,306 voiceover files in this game, and 
and 25,096 sound effects included in this game. Now, when you start off like all these projects, you also always need to do your pre-production. Uh, why do you do pre-production? You design the sort of like, you design what you need, you design what, what sort of tech you need, and you do proof of concepts, you do demos, and, and you, you just start to start the long process of trying to figure out what it is exactly that you want to create with this project. And part of these uh, pre-production tasks that we have is, is recording sessions, obviously. So in the pre-production, we did quite a few of these. Um, I just cherry-picked one of the sessions that we had um, in Manchester. Uh, we had this massive three-day weapon shooting session there with a couple of other companies. It was a joint production. We had roughly about like 37 weapons there, um, 72 mics, and five field recorders. Now, people often ask, like, why do you need all these recordings? Why do you need to record so many weapons and so many, with so many mics? And there's a very simple reason to that. As with Alan Wake, the previous title that we did, uh, the style of the weapons was more, more personal, like civilian type, um, hunting rifles. So with Quantum Break, we really wanted to create something new, something more modern, military weapon style game. So that was one of the main reasons why we did the session. And, um, Every single one of these mics, they have, they have their own unique purpose in the sound design. These layers that you can assume here uh, are then usually compressed into one final form that we call composite. And that's actually the final game sound that you hear in the game. So this is a classical like uh, comparison video of the different mics and preamp combinations that we used in the game. So it's an, it's, they are the exact same gunfire sounds, but recorded with different mics. So, why does audio matter? Gaming audio has transformed into very sophisticated subliminal language that is called uh, audio encoding. And it basically tells what's happening in the game. And it usually works very well with the uh, sort of gameplay cues that are used in the game. So it gives player information what's happening in every particular time in the game. With Quantum Break, we draw a lot of like, artistic in, um, inspiration from movies like Matrix and Inception. And uh, we also needed like, a new twist to Remedy's hallmark bullet time. So we uh, had few sound design pillars. Um, they needed to be focused on, firstly, Cutting-edge, time-bending combat. 
massive scale destruction and Hollywood style weapons, explosions and time powers. And also next generation visuals and audio technology. Now, audio is an art form in time. It represents very well how time moves back and forth in the game. How the game objects slow down in time. And uh, audio gives also the player understanding that the time is being ma manipulated. We exploited this in many ways uh, in combat situations. And because the nature of the game was that the g combat was very fast paced, we used a lot of like complex um, sound plugin combinations to create the sort of experience of what Quantum Break is. Um, next, I'm going to show you like few breakdown videos of the combat that we actually created. I'm going to show you like what sort of meta systems we had like beneath the surface. And um, the first one is gameplay cues. Um, in this brief uh, combat video, you will be hearing uh, the time powers. And uh, obviously, all the time powers had their own signature sounds, so the player can understand like what time power he's using. Now, in the second breakdown video, um, it's about dialogue. Now, dialogue is the single most evocative sound in combat. It gives the player information about what current time state each enemy is. And uh, I'm going to give you an ex example how the system works in the game. So, uh, Jack can use his like sort of dashing powers and and time shield, and this has this sort of like a knockdown effect on the enemies. And when they knock down a bit, uh, they also slow down in time, and that's well represented in this video as a voiceover effect as well. So you can clearly see here that like these enemies are slowing time and slowing down in time. Go now! Don't line up! Shit! Move, <sighs> move, move! No! Some kind of shield! Now, the third breakdown video is uh, a real-time, uh, it's, it's an actual uh, uh, music composite video where you can actually hear that like different real-time audio plugins were used to uh, create the illusion that like every single time when Jack uses time power, there's a signature uh, music effect also in place. <laughs>
And then finally, um, I have a video here which is like a brief submit from straight from the game, where all these different uh, meta systems are combined together. There's also character foley, weapon sounds, explosions, um, and er environmental sounds that are added to the mix. So this is a full mix from the game. Now, there was a lot of uh, individual co uh, uh, concepts and components in Quantum Break. Uh, this is sort of a craft that represents the different so type of uh, entities that were in the game, and we had to create like sort of unique sound design for. Uh, there were stutters, which are large gameplay sequences that differ a lot from the normal world. Um, there's frozen scenes, which are these calm exploration uh, scenes that push the uh, story of the quantum break forward. And there's also like unstable objects, which in the smaller scale, they're just like environmental hazards, but there are also like these massive um, set pieces in the game. Now, the smaller components that were included in these games were obviously the time powers that Jack had the whole concept of time travel, and the time monsters that we had in the game. And um, I'm going to go through these components one by one, starting off with the, uh, one of the uh, components that we had in the game, which is the Monarch Stutter Tech. All right. So what is Monarch? Monarch is the sort of like evil corporation in this game that Jack fights uh, throughout the game. And our or original concept was that like Monarch is sort of a, it's sort of like a mi militarized NASA company. And the concept behind the starter technology was that um, the starter technology is complicated and advanced. The stutter technology basically counters the effects of stutter, thus allowing the uh, troops to move and operate inside a stutter. And the technology had to have like similar sound of sort of like sound elements or design than it, what we had in stutter, um, just that there would be this sort of like uh, stylistic tie-in so that they belong together. And uh, right here I have a, a small audio sample from that technology. And uh, by the way, on a side note, if you want to get this, uh, this is actually a ringtone that we gave up free. So go to Remedy's website and get it for free if you want. Let's hear it. <laughs> So, Time Monsters, they were actually one of the last components of the last concepts that we had to do for Quantum Break. They were a really, really, really last addition to the, uh, the game. We kind of knew that they're, they're always going to, we always knew that they're going to be there. It was just like a very, very la last minute addition. And um, the very early concepts that we had with this, uh, these Time Monsters were much more like humanoid and alien type figures. But there was like more like human element in them. And um, we sort of like ditched a lot of the early concepts, like there was concepts about aging and youthening, uh, if you can say that. Um, 
as the, uh, the sort of like this personal time monster, he shifts through time, through alternative universes, like, and then you could hear it as a child or a female or a man, depending on which parallel universe he was stuck into. But we um, wanted to actually like tell a story through the, uh, or how the time sickness affected these people as the time sickness progressively got worse and worse and worse. So this is like one of the early concepts we had. Now, as we progressed through towards the final concept, um, there was, we, we kind of wanted to tap into the natural behavior model where people are actually scared of things that they do not really understand. So using this like, ideology, um, the last concept video that I created for this uh, time monster uh, was much more clear, much more broken and abstract than the first iterations we had. And uh, it also complements very well the other co audio concepts that we already had in the game. Now, the next concept I'm going to talk about is uh, unstable objects. Um, there were sort of like set pieces uh, in the game. Uh, depending on the size, they were more like um, environmental hazards, if they were small. But they, there were a couple of moments in the game where they were massive. Like, they were really like massive, destructive like set pieces. And uh, for these particular scenes, we uh, developed uh, audio plugin called QGrain, which is basically a WeWise plugin that uh, is a custom granular synthesis audio plugin, which basically enabled us to bend time. Now, audio is a linear medium. To give you an example, uh, if you think it like a normal musical track, it has an end, it has a middle bit, and then it ends. And with this sort of like plugin and technology, it enabled us to scrub back and forth, depending on the movements of that massive set piece we have here, to go back and forth with audio, giving you an illusion that like time is really breaking apart. And here's an example of that. Now, Quantum Break, what it really needed was audio support to enhance the sort of experience of time travel. Audio tells well how time moves in the game, so it made all the sense to create a dynamic music system that we designed for these few particular scenes where Jack actually travels back in time. Um, I'm not going to go into details like how it actually works, um, but the music track was basically split in tiny parts, both forwards and backwards, and this was fed into the system 
and the system actually tracked what sort of movements the player made. Um, so when player was moving backwards in time, the music in the scene rewinds. So you hear rewinded music. Now if you stop, then the granular, granular plugin that we had, it, it goes into effect and starts to uh, stretch the audio. So it stays still. It's, it feels like frozen. And if you go to the other direction, to the future, the music plays normally. So, the final pick component of the game, the stutters themselves, it really took us four years to like, fully understand how these uh, stutters in time work in the world of Quantum Break. We had early prototypes, we had early concepts. Um, some of you might have seen the Sophie scene that we released a few years back. And, uh, The sort of like uh, aesthetic idea was that those spaces, they hold like memories of events that ha have happened or will happen. And that concept would be like heard through the vehicle of audio. But this concept was uh, eventually become a frozen moment in the game. Now the first design that we had um, it sort of lacked the sort of excitement and sense of urgency we really wanted to create in the game. And stutter happens actually when a physics breaks down, and it acts much like black hole. In sort of like pseudo science terms, it's, it's an, an anomal anomaly in time, and it, it sort of reacts much like event horizon in black hole. So therefore, the final concept be became much more violent. And um, right here, um, I have a audio sample of like one of the 30-minute like drafts we created for the game. Like we, it was a daily routine sort of. We created these sort of like audio clips that like represented what stutter should sound and. This is probably the first one that was really like accepted for the game. Let's hear it. So the next video I'm about to show you is a visual target video. This was one of the early co concepts that we did for the uh, stutters. Um, a lot of like practical details that we had in this uh, video were later on changed during the production, but the core ideas how the stutter operates are there. And this was probably the first time we actually had a proper idea how the stutter works in the game.
Now, that was just a visual target video. So after that, we actually needed to make this work in engine. So we went to a very long journey in the Northlight engine, and we tried to achieve the aesthetic feel in the game the same way. So another plugin was needed for create that sort of effect into the game. Um, it's called Q Analyzer. And what it actually does is it actually analyzes the audio content, the sound effects that we put into it. And uh, it analyzes the audio frequency content, the high frequencies, the mid frequencies, and bass frequencies, and the sort of like average dynamic range of those sound effects. And that data is then transformed into the actual visual uh, geometric distortions that we have in the game. So this way, audio complements the visuals in a really, really nice, stunning way. And this, was, this technology that we developed for Quantum Break was like really the ultimate next generation killer app. And um, here's an example video of the technology that we used. And uh, next, I'm going to show you a video how that technology plus our sound design for the stutters was combined into the final product. Where's your car? This way. So, as always, one should always end the presentation with a bang. So once this geometric distortion uh, system was fully developed and integrated into our Northlight engine, practically any kind of audio could be fed into the system. So enjoy.
Thank you. All right, that was some very cool stuff and an interesting peek behind the curtain of quantum breaks. Uh, does anyone have any additional questions to ask? There we go. All right, so when you demonstrated the, how the music changes whenever the hero uses the different time powers, uh, were they created in real time with a set of DSPs like a tremolo and filters, or was it a different music track, like a different version of the song that was switched to? Yes, that's actually a very good question. Um, what we actually did with the uh, music in the game was that um, we had like a couple of different layers of audio or music playing. Uh, basically like a tonal layer and percussive layer. And uh, when Jack used his time powers, we kind of used the granular q crank pl plugin to stretch it, and then we added more post-production or like post-effects into that material. Uh, this was particularly, <laughs> particularly challenging um, because um, if you had like any sort of like strong melodies in the uh, music, it didn't work. And also, if you used like traditional like four, four to four time signatures, um, it kind of didn't work as well. So we needed to do like this tonal kind of bed uh, in conjunction with like very odd time signature music to make it work. Uh, but it's all done in real time, basically. All right. Any other questions? Okay, so we have another. Um, I heard very similar sounds in the Transformer movies. I was wondering if you were inspired by them <laughs> or the same plugins that they used, maybe. Um, I'm known for, for working through serendipity. So, like, I, I just, like, m my working methods with, like, working on Quantum Break were basically... Um, just like doing these massive plug-in chains and just like running through stuff that like just random stuff from our libraries and uh, when I grind them through a couple of times and just like spin a couple of other elements in it's just like oh what do you know it just, just sounds just like um, transformers whether or not it's, it's a, a testament to their true fantastic artwork you know perhaps I might have taken uh, some liberties on the sound design and that sort of direction, so, yeah. Any others? I have one question, if you don't mind. Yeah. In the last demo you, you demonstrated, uh, is it really the soundtrack that uh, actually drives the distortion in the geometry of the scene? Yes, you can basically put any kind of audio there and it does its magic. So that's the whole beauty of it. So next time when you play Quantum Break, you know that, like, you hear the sounds there, all the ripples and everything that you have there, they're just like all audio generated. So it's a really, really, really nice job from the uh, visual guys. They did an absolutely fantastic job on this game. All right, that's very impressive. Let's give it one more time for Mr. Ville Sorsa. Thank you.